December 8th edition of the Sports Mix. Nick Verzellini, Kyle McLaughlin here on the show. And we're starting the show today with members of the Martinsburg Bulldogs football team after their 10th state championship. Head coach David Walker, lineman Rashad Reed, quarterback slash safety Murphy Clement joining us in studio today, guys. And congratulations on that 10th state championship. Uh, was just a really good win on Saturday for Princeton 57-13. Yeah, um, you know, thank you. First of all, thank you guys for having us. And um, it was a uh, it was a great day. Weather was nice, and guys played well and came out the way we wanted it to. First question going to be for Murphy, kind of a funny one. You still out of breath from all that running on uh, uh, last um, Saturday? Man? Not as much as I am um, tired as as I am from throwing up. Obviously, I th- threw up a few times after after those <laughs> runs, but nah, out of breath, I, I wouldn't say I am, but nah, I'm good. And then for you, Rashad, your first uh, state championship here at Martinsburg, getting that win, how special of a moment was it? It's definitely special. Um, didn't really know how to feel, but um, I was just filled with excitement and happiness, and it's just a great feeling overall. Good luck. I'll let you go. Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, Coach Walker, um, for you, this is your ninth state championship, but it's your first one since you came back. Usually, you know, you talk to coaches and players at higher levels that talk about uh, winning, you know, that first one's always the most special. Does this one have a different place with it being the first one since you came back? And uh, how, how did you, uh, I guess, evaluate those when you, when you think about all the ones you've won? Uh, I mean, they're all special in their right. own way. So I, I don't know that this one is um, – it, it's different just because I was three years removed. But uh, once – you know, once you go through the process, I, I think it's it's very similar to, to the other ones. I think, you know, you go in with certain expectations in the season. And for me, coming back, trying to get to know the guys and trying to, you know, find, find that even ground. And then things just started falling into place. But I think – you know, the big thing is that these guys were willing to work. They put in the work every day, and uh, it's a great group of young men, and i uh, really excited and really excited for those guys, proud of them. We'll start with uh, Coach Walker and then go down the line from uh, my right to left. What was maybe something during the season or at practice that you guys really knew as the defining moment in your minds to realize that this year's team would be special, go out and have an undefeated year and win the state championship? I don't know that you were saying that I thought that. Um, for me, I think the vision was for us to get better every day in the, in the jail and, and to be unselfish, to be good people and, and do the things that maybe you know, you don't talk about it and don't maybe have a lot to do with X's and O's. But once we started getting closer to the playoffs, I, I saw our guys really change gears a little bit. And for me, the vision was for it to work out the way that it did. And I mean, I had in my mind that I wanted us to be ranked where we had to go to Huntington. I wanted us to be ranked where we could go down there and play those guys. And, and, and playing Princeton in the championship, you know, I lived in Princeton two years ago. And I know a lot of those people. Things just seems like a fairy tale, really, for me. Uh, it's kind of like I think I said after the game. It's kind of the thing dreams are made of. Um, and I thought about this a few weeks ago. And this really could work out this way. Once we started the postseason, these guys picked it up a notch. Uh, there was a time in the season I thought, eh, I don't know about these guys. You know, they do just enough to get by. And they're in cruise control. We play some local schools. They play, you know, didn't practice well. Just didn't play great. And, but once the postseason started, I saw them shift gears, and uh, I saw the focus that they had, and I felt really good about what we were doing the last four weeks of the season. How about you, Murphy? Um, I'd probably say at the Ohio- game in Ohio, before the game, honestly, it felt like everyone was just in the present moment and, like, ready for that game and didn't feel like anyone was, like, off, like, worried about their own thing. It felt like everyone was, just, like, locked in and... And when we played the game, we could tell, like, everyone wanted it just as bad as the person next to them. And having that and, like, knowing we could be that team to, like, get it by no means or by all means, it just, it was great to, like, start the season and know we were able to be that team that we wanted to be and be that team at the end of the season when we need it most in the state championship. And that's what we ended up doing. So it was great to be able to start the season out and like basically know we have that type of team and be able to play like that with each other 
in the start of the season. And then Rashad? And to, um, to quarterback off what Murphy said, um, Clarkson, they was, you know, we was told, yo, these guys are nationally ranked, they're good. And kind of in the locker room, like Murph was saying, everybody was locked in, everybody was focused. And we went on to field. It was nothing but just fierce competition. Everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. And it was really um, us as a group, both sides of the ball. We was um we was playing as one and we continued to do that all season and I feel like that's what kinda brought it together for making us such a special group. Murphy, for you, you didn't get to play in the state championship game last time you guys were there. You talked about it with Colin uh, before the state championship this year, but just uh when you look back at your journey at Martinsburg and having that injury that you went through and then not really looking always like yourself last season, but then return to your full speed, it seemed like, this year. Just how would you, I guess, summarize your career at Martinsburg? Um, it's basically just like an up and down process. Like sometimes days are going to be going better than others, and sometimes days are going to be going bad. And I, I had a year where it was going bad, a year and a half where it wasn't going the best. And I knew if I like actually worked at it and kept like going up and up and staying consistent, I wasn't going to be able to like fall off. And, like, if I stayed consistent, I was going to be able to uh, basically be back to where I was or maybe even better. And I feel like since I stayed on my craft and stayed, like, consistent, I was able to continue at the or my my high school career and be able to finish out the season how I wanted to finish out the season my sophomore year with Hudson and them. But being able to finish that with these guys, it's equally as special. Rashad, talk a little bit about the defensive line. Tremendous season for all of you guys up front, uh, just looking at the numbers, holding teams to, on average, 30 rushing yards <laughs> in a game, which is absolutely insane to me and to a lot of people around the entire state. Just talk about, I guess, how you guys work together to make each other the beasts that you are out on that football field? Um, definitely a special group of linemen, I think. Um, every day in practice, everybody was competition, always. And I really honestly got to give a shout out to our scout team because they kind of put us where we needed to be. But us as defense alignment, it was, yo, like, stop playing down. Like, play like it's a game every day. Don't stop. And, I mean, everybody as a group was just competing with each other. Like, at one point in the season, me, EJ, and Xerxes was competing to see who could have more sacks in one game. And me and Will at one point were seeing who could have more TFLs, just overall tackles. And it was always just a fierce competition every game and every week. And we everybody just pushed each other to the best that they could be. So for you guys, both seniors, uh, what are some plans for you moving forward? of your football careers? Um, honestly, for me, it's still up in the air right now. I, I obviously want to play football in college, but for where I'm planning on going, I would like to stay in-state, may probably go to West Virginia, but it's still everything up in the air right now, so I'm not sure as of right now. For the moment, um, I'm committed to Elon. Um, I'm going down on my official visit this weekend, get acquainted with all the guys, and then I'll probably end up committing like officially like next week sometime. But I'm going to play college at Elon. I think it's going to be a great experience. And I just hope that when I go there, they're going to make me the best that I can be. And then Coach Walker, for you, uh, with you know these guys and also just the senior class, uh, how are you trying to help them get to the next level? And I guess uh, what's it like to see you know some schools showing more interest in this program? Well, last week they started, we started getting guys coming into school, uh, talking to our players. And what normally happens is, um, especially at the Division II level, all those guys will be coming around. Uh, Division ones are already on a class of 25. Uh, Division two guys now are making their rounds, so they'll come to the school. And I'll, I'll call these guys out of class and stuff, and they'll talk to them, and they'll fill out the questionnaires. The main thing for me is to make sure that these guys, not only these two, they, these two are fine, but to make sure the rest of them are, you know, have registered for the clearinghouse, make sure their transcripts in order, make sure they fill out their FAFSA, make sure that they're, you know, that they get their EFC number, make sure that they do the things they need to do, and so they are eligible to play. And there's a home for everyone. I think it's just finding the right fit, but the process for a lot of our guys is just now starting. So as these guys come through and filter through, they'll they'll meet our players. Our players, our players will take visits, and then 
they'll find the best fit for them. What was your guys, uh, I guess, favorite <clears throat> moment in the season? If you can grab one of many different things throughout the entire time. I'll let you go first. But, uh, I, I got to say, to be honest, man, that um, I wanted that. I was thinking about it all year, just... I can't wait to play him again. And we went and played him. Everybody balled out, did what they were supposed to. And just that feeling of slapping the other team's hand, knowing we was going to the States, and that we beat the team that took us out last year, just, it just amazing. Couldn't couldn't feel any type of way more about it. It's just the best feeling ever. I was actually thinking about the, <laughs> the same game, because, yeah, obviously losing them last year in the game before the championship, that was, it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking for the seniors, heartbreaking for the entire team. And being able to come out like this year and know like they're just as good and we're just as good and it's going to take, it's going to come down to the final minutes. It was just great to be able to basically be back in that situation again and like know that we have to, we have to win this and or it's going to be a repeat of last year. And our guys knew we didn't want that and coming into that game we played basically how we played against um, Clarkson North and we came out and did what we needed to do in that entire game. Coach Walker, do you have a favorite memory from this season? Last Saturday, winning the state championship. Uh, I've got a lot of great memories. The thing that, 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 you know, coming in and one thing I stressed to these guys was the, the, in order for them to be successful as they are, there's no doubt they're talented, but one thing I harped on all the time was being able to overcome adversity. How are you going to react to adversity? We're going to be put in situations where we're going to be uncomfortable. So we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. These guys heard me say that, what, 10,000 times mm-hmm. over here? <laughs> so the fact that they, you know, a uh, lot of times people hear you, but they don't listen. So I think they actually listened. And uh, I was just really proud of of, of seeing it all come together at one pinnacle moment at the end of the season and, you know, to, to win the state championship and to see these guys end their careers the way they did is just a, a special, my favorite moment of, of, of the season. Would you say that that maybe is what makes this group special and allowed them to be champions? Well, I think, you know, that they've always been very successful at everything they've done. So, I mean, I really wasn't surprised about the success that they had. It was just a matter of getting these guys to buy in not to be selfish, and it's very easy in this society today for guys to get caught up in me, 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 but these guys really put their personal stuff beside them, especially latter parts of the year, and it just allowed themselves to do what they needed to do to, to put the team first, and I think once you get a group of guys that that are talented, but they work hard, they care about each other, and they're selfless, it's a, it's a great formula for success, and these guys were the definition of this, especially the last four weeks of the season. We mentioned uh, both you, Murphy, and Rashad are seniors. What, I guess, with it being the end for you guys on the football field, is some words of advice that you guys are leaving behind for the underclassmen that are remaining on the team? Honestly, um, trust the guys next to you. And during the games, trust that they're going to do their job and you do your job. And if you do your job and you trust them to do their job, they'll get it done. And if they do their job and they, they trust you to do your job, they're going to get done. So if everyone trusts each other, then we should basically click on all cylinders. And that's what we started doing towards the end of the year. And that's what ended up taking to basically finish out the season how we wanted to. And also to just, I don't know, don't take it like so lightly, like, or don't, don't dread like the practices and like the tour days and like, Stuff like that, because, like, I was dreading it all summer. I, I was not ready for two days, but, like, honestly, as soon as it was over, it was like, it was like, dang, it was like, that was last time. It was it was just crazy to think about. So, basically, yeah, don't don't dread the, the hard days during practice and during games and stuff like that. Honestly, I got to say, just leave it all on the field, man. Like, when you go onto that field and it's game day every day, just leave everything on that field so that at the end of the day, you knew you gave it all you could. 100%, 110% effort. Just leave everything you got on that field. Coach, for you, as as the coach moving forward, uh, you know, it, it's going to be tough. You're replacing a lot of talent, but um, 
still have a lot of good, young, talented guys coming back, and you're able to see some of those guys get into the games <clears> at the <throat> end and everything. So how do you keep it going from year to year? Well, I th- we lose great players every year, and I think once the standard is set so high that the young guys understand that if we're going to – you know, maintain the level of success or get better. This is the work we have to put into us. So the exciting thing for me is trying to develop and find the pieces to the puzzle to put them in the right place. So we'll go to work in January and our guys will be in the weight room working hard and we're going to develop those young guys and guys will step up. And like I say, we, we've got great players that graduate every year and hopefully we'll, we'll continue to have that trend. I know, uh, Coach, the celebration obviously started Saturday after the game, carried over to Tuesday being in the Christmas parade, and now it looks like uh, it's been announced that you guys will have a celebration of the 10th state championship next Thursday at 6 p.m. at the uh, high school. All are welcome inside the cafeteria. Just tell us about, I guess, what all will take place during that. Yeah, we'll have the players lined up like like we've always done in the past, and there'll be pictures and autographs, and there'll be probably some cookies and punch and cake Cookie. and stuff, probably <laughs> and, uh, there'll be plenty of food um i mean and the fans parents uh, will be there and kids anybody come in and wants to meet get your picture taken with the guys um there'll be plenty of those opportunities and just a celebration of the season and uh you know kind of a, an official send-off it's 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 a it's a nice evening nice event anything else Nick? No, i don't have anything else all right, any final thoughts, guys, on the uh, season? Not really, just um, thank you for having us and, yeah, getting us all out here and getting us on here. Yes, sir. 